Playa del Carmen. Not a place that was ever on our list. Probably not a place we'd ever go again. But due to the craziness of COVID-19, we landed ourselves there for an entire month. Want to see how it went? Here we go. Good to have a travel day. Now we just got to figure out what the best mode of transportation to get from Tulum to Playa de Carmen. We're going to walk down the street here. Um, there's a 7-Eleven down at the end of the street where collectivos and taxis kind of tend to chill. So we're going to see if we can catch a collectivo. Yeah. Which is basically a local's bus that jumps from place to place. They're super cheap and um way cheaper than like the major major bus okay. so we did end up having to take a taxi over to the bus station but we actually found a really honest taxi driver yeah. who charges 40 pesos so what does that tell you about the dude who tried to charge us 290 pesos oh yesterday we were able to get on a collectivo from the bus station yes. so it's going to be 45 pesos all the way to Playa del carmen which ones, is yeah. like each one. yeah which is like $2.25. Okay guys, we've made it. So this is our new home for the next month. Um, we've got our own little We're the only guests here now, so that's great until my parents come next week. So we've got our own little Dahlia. Hi, Dahlia. Oh. Dahlia. Dahlia likes to jump. Dahlia <laughs> likes to jump. Down, please. Thank you. Oh. Dahlia, ven acá. This is our humble little abode. We have a cute little kitchen area, um, a tiny room, and but a complete bathroom. And there's also an outdoor kitchen that will suffice for the rest of our needs so yeah this is where we're going to be for the next like month and here's the outdoor area here's the kitchen table and here's the outside shared kitchen area that we get to use like i said we're the only guest right now fridge so once again our mode of transportation or two fancy bikes. I like bikes. <laughs> Me too. Myrtle and Gertrude Dose. 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 Well, we are heading um, yeah, to the grocery store. So yeah. Super Aki. Yeah. Super Aki. Yeah. Hola. Hola. Policemen. And uh, yeah, we need groceries for yeah. just a little while. We're here for a month. Yeah. So the next couple days are going to be grocery store, laundry mat, <laughs> maybe check out the local beach. We've been laughing all week as they told us it was the rainy season. It's been a million degrees and super hot. Yeah. It's, uh, it is officially shown up today. Yeah, glad we didn't bring the camera. Yeah. Well. And glad we made a quick decision because we just made it. Like we felt these two big raindrops and then like two more real fast. We thought, uh, we better get some more quick. So yeah. jumped under this awning and then boom, the bottom fell out. <laughs> Oh, for a while. Still looking at this same wall. Well, we decided to not wait any longer because it wasn't raining that hard. We're like, let's go ahead and try to get there, and we, maybe we can at least be grocery shopping while we're waiting on the rain to pass. So we started going down the street, and of course, it just starts to downpour again. <laughs> we have to cross that now <laughs> on Myrtle and Gertrude Dose. We made it. We did not cross that river. We came down and went over the speed bump. So this is our favorite market. It's like a supermarket, but a local brand. It's called Aki. 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 Super Aki. Yeah, and they got all kinds of stuff. And it's a pretty good price. And they're big places. They're sort of like a Sam's back home or sort of something. Ready, Freddy? Successful. It's really difficult to ride a bike when you've got like 
unevenly matched groceries on each side and you're kicking them with your feet. So the neighbors at our apartment are having a gigantic party and I think our host feels bad about it. So they brought me a coconut. I'm not minding the party. Because it's not late. It's like 4.30 in the afternoon. But if it gets to like 10.30, then this old lady's going to be upset. Somebody is too lazy to go get a cup. He's just, he's just going with this approach. Carmen, we are doing something exciting today. Yes. Well, it's exciting it's for exciting us. It's exciting for us because we love food. Yep, we're doing a food, food tour today. We're going on a food tour. Yep. So the first restaurant we've come to this morning is called La Cuava del Chango. And it, per the Google, uh, Ryan actually went to get us a seat because there is quite a long line. Which, for us, is actually a good thing. That's what we like to see. Um, so this is located downtown and the more touristy part on fifth just off of fifth avenue so um but they say they have a lot of regular clientele that come frequently they try to, <laughs> well hello our name's on the list <laughs> they try to change up the menu almost weekly so you get all kinds of stuff and you can get anything from like granola yogurt and fruit salad to very traditional breakfast that we came for i'm going to try to say correctly chilaquiles ryan is asking the handy dandy google translate what La Cueva del Chango means. I'm guessing something with a monkey. The cave of the monkey. The cave of the monkey. Oh, okay. There's a monkey on this side. Yeah, that was my giveaway. And we've got a little turtle oven going oh. on over there, right in the middle of the restaurant. Come on, guys, have some food. Alright guys, it is here. I have de cilantro it. Um, got a little green sauce on top, avocado, there's onions and white cheese underneath on top of tortillas, and medium to hot red sauce, and a fried egg. So, um, this is like a bajillion calories, but it looks and smells amazing, and I'm gonna try to eat it before my chips get super soggy. Um, nachos for breakfast. Pretty good. It tastes like these chips are sort of like a tortilla. I, think. I mean, they are tortilla chips, but they are a little soft. So, yeah, it's like a tastes like a broken up fried egg burrito. Okay, so when we ordered here, this is actually a shared order. We only ordered one with two eggs, and they split it for us to make it easier for us to eat. And uh, anyways, it tastes amazing. I mean, it tastes like Abby, Abby said earlier. It tastes like an open face like breakfast burrito. So if you get the tortilla, the onions, a really good so tomato sauce, that kind of salsa with it, avocado. It's uh -huh. and approximately 30 seconds later, as you can see, no. that was disgusting, terrible. So this, that whole meal with the water and breakfast was 186 pesos, which comes out to about nine dollars and thirty cents. A huge coffee bar going on over here. I missed out on that because I already drank a whole pot this morning. Super, super cute place. Everybody was friendly, service was great, beautiful. Guys, time for round two. Supposedly the best tacos in town at El Fogon. Here we go. All right, 
Alright guys, so El Fogon is a long ride all the way across town. So we are away from the tourist area now. We're over by Walmart and some local shopping. Um, but this place smells really good, so let's get some time. So after they get reading a few blogs, they, they, they recommend, of course, the tacos are the best here. And they recommend the pastor, which is, when I when I put in Google Trends, it says shepherd, so I'm assuming that's lamb or some type of sheep, you know. That's what we're, lamb, and so, and of course, we also got the chorizo, because that's one of our favorites, so. Go for it. How's the, how is it? Very tender. Really good. I probably should ask for no cilantro too because there's a lot on here. But it's still very good. The salsa has a little bit of spice to it. Pretty good. I didn't put much on. But. So the best part about street tacos in Mexico is that they always come with two many tortillas. And you really can get like two tacos out of what they offer. Taco Master, like, they totally changed my mind about that place. And now I would definitely come here all the time because they're just good people. Yeah. And they make a decent taco. And they're fun. What did our taco experience end up being? Around uh, 180 pesos. So another $9 or so. So yeah, around $9. That was with, and that's with the tip. So. All right, guys, so we have been looking at this little popsicle shop, ice cream shop, yeah. every time we've gone by for like days now. And so we finally decided to stop and get a little Mexican dessert while we were here. So this is a paleta, or a Mexican popsicle. They're usually more like ice cream pops than popsicle. As you can see, Ryan's has some Oreos in there. I'm not sure how authentic that is, but the guy mm. said it was good. Yeah. And I've got a coconut one. Um, usually Mexican ice cream, the ones that we've seen at least, are flavored with like honey. So it's yeah. a different kind of taste than like our American ice cream. Yeah. Um, Mexican order for ice cream is halados. So if you see a halado store, you should stop. And the great thing about paletas is that they're usually like 30 pesos. So yeah. for like a dollar, dollar twenty. Yeah. You're gonna pop it. And they're icy and good and mmm, I've got chocolate on top. Yummy! The name of the store, it's Amici. Aww. That's super cute. It's just off of Fifth Avenue, if you come down, head towards the tourist, I mean, heading away from the major tourist area, you come up to this place and it's so super cute. The pops are vegan, so if you're inclined to that, you can get a milkshake, empanadas, um, Italian coffee. He also has a little Wi-Fi zone set up here, which we've seen lots of people standing using their computers and stuff. Obviously popsicles. And it's just super cute. And he has good prices, so come see him. Okay, so we came home and did a little work and now we are going back out for a little early evening snack. 
All right, so we decided not to take our bikes. We're just gonna stay in our little area, which is a local area. We're just gonna walk down one of the streets here and just see if we can find a little stand on the side of the road to get some empanadas. got this baby it has roasted corn mayonnaise cheese and chilies uh, or chili like sauce um, so let me get it kind of all mixed up here so interesting snack definitely not healthy <laughs> this has like all the fat all the saturated fat and some carbs and I just dropped you it just all down cool Cool. I'm cool like that. And you got this little tiny baby spoon. But let's see what it tastes like. I mean, of course it's amazing. <laughs> Unless you hate mayonnaise. So, what do you think of the esquites? It's interesting, yeah? Oh yeah, I mean, I like mayonnaise. Yeah. So. All right guys, so we are headed now for round four. We are back on the bike and we are going to our host, Marcella's favorite restaurant. She is a pasta and Italian lover, just like we are. And so she says Romeo's Pizzeria is the best and girlfriend's lived here a long time, so she ought to know. Okay, we've never been to this part of town before and now I got so excited because I saw two markets and the biggest, most beautiful church and I saw an outdoor sculpture garden with all these lights and stuff and now I don't want to go to dinner. Now I want to go see all the things. Oh my goodness, look at these cutie patootie wooden menus. So cute. I love it already. <laughs> It's just very, very creamy. Mm -hmm. And like, you gotta add a little bit of salt to give it more taste. Yeah. 
I think what it is, I figured it out. I think it was made with like unsalted butter. Yeah. And so uh, either a little bacon on top would have been like super great. Oh yeah. Or, but once we added a little salt and pepper, Yeah. now it's really good. Yes, good. Another waiter just came by, cleaned up our table, and we said we didn't want dessert or coffee. And he's like, how about limoncello on the house? Sure. Why not? Well, unfortunately that did not turn out good. I don't like to leave bad reviews for places, but they literally charged me almost twice as much for my meal as it was on the menu. And when we brought it up to them, they said, well, that was for this kind of sauce. And you, and so they asked me if I wanted cream sauce or red sauce. And I said cream sauce, but I mean, it was asked as if, like, not going to change the price from what you ordered on the menu kind of thing. Well, then they gave me this sauce with truffle oil and all kinds of stuff in it and charged me, like, almost twice as much for my meal. Um, and then when we brought it up, they were like, too bad. So, leaving on a sour note a little bit and... Um, not impressed and honestly it wasn't very good um it it yeah it just it wasn't very good and then that just like hit the nail on the head super super sour note um don't like to leave bad reviews about anyone but that was just felt really dishonest and like just super I don't know, it felt like a scam well, almost. It felt super dishonest. And then when we said something about it, they just like hung their head and ran away really quickly. Like, to almost, which made it feel even more yeah. dishonest. And, and it was to a point where I actually had to like take the check up there today because I didn't want to They come weren't going to gonna come back. So I had to take it up there, so. Yeah, and I mean, they, everyone else like got, you know, checked out at their table, which is normal here for Mexico. Yeah. They bring the thing to your table and you check out. Um, they literally never yeah. came back like they just hung their head and ran away so I mean it made it feel like they knew what they did yeah. was not cool yeah and but nobody wanted to fix it okay so the tents that we saw earlier in town tonight are actually some kind of festival that's going on for the next few days so we're gonna go see what's here we should have come down here and eaten we should have come down here and eaten but we didn't know Like it's probably like goods from Chiapas or Oaxaca, um, one of the really traditional areas of Mexico. Um, there's some clothing and some food, and it says it's the first annual festival of this kind, so I guess it's going to be happening next year. We found another festival, Festival Playa de Mi Esperanza. I don't know who that is, but it's their festival. <laughs> So we survived the market. Abby didn't buy anything. Uh, I did good. She did good. There's lots of pretty things in there though. And when I, again, the food looked really good, but we're so full from today's food tour. I don't think I can eat anything else. I found Andres Quintana Roo. No facts for you because these facts are in Espanol. <laughs> what happened, boo? Yeah. <laughs> it fell over. It's here. And it looks good. I can't get this part. I'm having trouble with this one. <laughs> You're having lots of problems. All right. So here we go. Uh, cilantro. I always forget in Mexico to tell them no cilantro. Because cilantro is literally on everything and I hate it. Yep. Ryan all of a sudden can't ride a bike. <laughs> well, we probably look pretty silly with all of our groceries hanging from the sides of our bike. Ryan 
intense taste in the get-go. <laughs> We're still trying to catch the gecko. Well, we've resumed trying to catch the gecko. Ooh, it's really sad. <laughs> Go outside, little fella. <laughs> <laughs> 